in this module we'll talk about cytogenetic disorders cytogenetic disorders basically are the disorders in which there is a structural abnormality with the chromosome we are familiar with what chromosomes are and these structural abnormalities are generally visible through a microscope in order to detect cytogenetic disorders a technique called KU typing is used to diagnose these cytogenetic disorders karyotyping is a photographic representation of g banded stained metaphase chromosomes spread in order of decreasing length i'll show you a karyotype in the next slide here i would additionally would like to point out that these chromosomal abnormalities cytogenetic abnormalities are roughly in 1 in 2000 newborns and 50% of the first trimester abortions have chromosomal aberrations or chromosomal abnormalities as promised here's a karyotype you can see that we have 46 chromosomes which I, I mentioned earlier too out of these 46 chromosomes 44 are the autosomes meaning that these chromosomes do not carry any genetic inf information that plays any role in sexual differentiation the sex chromosomes are x and y men have one x chromosome and one y chromosome whereas females have two x chromosomes so if there's an abnormality we look at some of the normalities uh, chromosomes can have later but here i would additionally like to point out the chromosomal nomenclature first of all we look at the position of the centromere we know what that is we have already learned about that chromosomes can be classified into three different groups for human uh, chromosomes they are metacentric meaning that the centromere is in the center of the chromosome that is metacentric chromosome if centromere is not exactly at the center uh, so the two arms of the chromosome i will point those two arms out to you here just a second so there are the two arms of the chromosomes p arm p stand meaning petite and the q arm which is the next alphabet in a b c so petite arm two arms if the both the arms are of the same length the chromosome is metacentric if the p arm is smaller relatively much smaller than the q arm these are sub metacentric chromosomes and the chromosomes in which the centromere is pretty much at the tip of the chromosome they have a very very small p arm these are called acrocentric chromosomes there are other two types of chromosomes too but they are not in humans i'll just mention there are telocentric chromosomes which are generally in mouse and holocentric chromosomes in which they are the whole centromere is present all along the length of the chromosome we don't have those chromosomes either now p arm and q arm are divided into arbitrary regions you can see uh, by arbitrary i mean hypothetical theoretical that scientists have just come up with these regions one two three you can see that for example in this chromosome one you can see that these regions are marked right here these regions have bands and these bands if we actually allow these chromosomes to stretch i won't get into how we do that but if the chromosomes are longer even sub bands are visible so if we want to refer to a particular region of the chromosome we will first say the number of the chromosome chromosome number one for example then we will talk we will say which arm it is so let's say we, are, we want to talk about this particular band here so it will be chromosome number one and then we will say the q arm or the p arm in our case it's the q arm and then we will say okay so which region are this particular band is then we write the region number and then the band number so this is how basically you refer to a particular region of the chromosome now let's move forward and we will talk about chromosomal abnormalities types of chromosomal abnormalities an exact multiple of haploid which is n which is the number of chromosomes in a in a gamete a sperm or egg is uh, um, exact multiple is called a polyploid 2n is the number of chromosomes in our autosomal cells or normal cells non reproductive cells so polyploid organisms or polyploidy is basically referring to complete addition an extra set of chromosomes so if someone or some um, organism has three times the n it will be called 3n 
or 4 times the n, it will be 4n, that is polyploidy. A chromosomal number that is not exact multiple of n is called aneuploid. Aneuploidy can result from non-disjunction of homologous uh, pair of chromosomes in first meiotic division or failure of chromatids to separate in second meiotic division. This can result in monosomy or trisomy, 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1 respectively. I would just like to remind you again, there is a meiosis that here we see meiosis in, there, in which there is non-disjunction and you can see that uh, some of the gametes, two gametes have extra chromosome, these gametes have an extra chromosome and these gametes have one less chromosome. So this is a type of aneuploidy, this would be n, this would be n minus 1. 2n minus 1 and this would be 2n plus 1. So now let's move forward. Let's talk about the chromosomal types of structural abnormalities of chromosome. There can be translocations meaning part of a chromosome breaks and it exchanges a similar size piece or uh, if the piece can be actually longer or smaller. A piece from chromosome breaks and fuses with another chromosome and there is another piece from here you can see on the for example in the uh, in the photograph the a little piece of blue chromosome is being exchanged by a little piece of with a little piece of red chromosome so this is balanced reciprocal translocation there's another type of translocation in acrocentric chromosomes which is uh, which is displayed in the right beneath it in this as i've said that acrocentric chromosomes have a very small P arm. So here you can see the P arm is very very small. If a translocation occurs between acrocentric chromosomes, two types of chromosomes are formed. One is a large chromosome, other is small chromosome. Generally, the, the tips or very tip or the small arm of the acrocentric chromosome has is coding for RNA for ribosomes. And since we have more than one acrocentric chromosomes, uh, I can show you that later, uh, we have five acrocentric chromosomes, if that, this small chromosome is lost, it won't have any effect. So anyways, this is a centric fusion or Robertsonian translocation, that's what it is called too, between two acrocentric chromosomes giving rise to a larger chromosome and one smaller chromosome. There is next category is deletion, a little piece of chromosome is broken off and is lost that is basically a deletion of chromosome. Another, another way we can have chromosomal aberration is the two tips of chromosome break and chromosome becomes a circle like shown here. And these two tips when they break off the chromosome becomes a circle and the tips are or the fragments are lost. So these are some of the types of chromosomal aberrations that can uh, happen. Uh, let's look at some other isochromosome. Normally, a chromosome as we know when during meiosis it separates along its this axis in some cases a chromosome when if a chromosome separates two chromatids rather than two chromatids separating the two p arms go to one chromosome and the two q arms go to another uh, to the to the other chromosome we have a chromosome with identical p arms identical both arms being identical this type of chromosome is called isochromosome. This generally happens with the X chromosome. There are inversions. Lastly, a piece of chromosome, we have a chromosome, a little piece breaks and it inverts 180 degree and then again fuses with the chromosome. This is the inversion. If it involves the centromere region, it will be pericentric inversion. If it does not involve, if it does not involve the centromere region, it will be paracentric inversion. So we will continue our discussion of uh, cytogenetics in the next module.